Blizzard, Activision, whichever one of you, whoever's in charge of putting the system requirements out there, I keep waiting to make my video on, can your PC run Call of Duty Vanguard until they'd actually publish the official final system requirements? But they don't seem to be that interested in doing that considering the game comes out in less than a week. So what are we gonna be able to do? Well, the good news is we have a lot of information to go on. First of all, when the beta came out back in September, they did publish system requirements for the beta. So we'll talk about that. And then we can also get into what sorts of frame rates and resolutions these were actually targeting because people released footage of the beta. So we can actually do quite a bit. And while the beta isn't gonna be perfectly representative of the final game, it's not like a beta that gave them, you know, six more months to tweak the, the you know, performance optimizations. It's, so I think it'll be pretty close in performance with some differences, but this will get us a pretty good ballpark figure. So what do we have here? Our minimum requirements, most people care about the GPU, so let's just jump right in. It's not that high. A GTX 960 or a GTX 1050 Ti or AMD Radeon R9 380. Now, with that in mind, okay, that's not that high of requirements, but what sort of resolution, frame rate, and settings is that actually going to get you? Let's jump right into that. So one thing I found was a channel here who played the beta on a GTX 1050 Ti. So how about rather than me speculating what sorts of performance that'll get you, we just look at the performance it'll get you. Now, they do show off the settings that you're using, and I'll link this video uh, in my description, but you can see that it appears to be a mixture of mostly low and medium with a few things on high. So this is not turning everything down as low as it could possibly go. And if we jump into gameplay, you can see that they're not at 30, they're not at 60, they're kind of in between, right? It looks like mostly in the 40s and uh, sometimes into the 50s, depending on the exact scene. So my thought here is if they turned everything all the way down to low, they probably could have gotten closer to a 60 FPS average, although maybe not gotten exactly there. Now that's the CPU side of things, uh, sorry, the GPU side of things. Um, but where does your GPU fall in relation to, for example, a 1050 Ti? Well, that's where we can pop open a, uh, a, like a, a tier list. Now there's a lot of these out there. The one that I prefer is the one here at Tech Power Up, but none of these are perfect because these are based on averages in different games and each game can respond a little bit differently depending on you know exactly the game engine that's being used and all of that. Let me fly out of your way. Ah, okay. So again, I'll link this in my description. If you set the 1050 Ti to 100%, we can then look at how the other GPUs uh, perform relative to that, and you can find where yours falls on this list. So basically they recommend a 960 or 1050 Ti, which you'll notice are very close in, per in, in performance with the 1050 Ti being slightly stronger. It's got a, uh, you know, the 960 is about 93% of the performance of our 1050 Ti. The R9 380 that they recommend is very, very close to the 960. So these are all very close to each other, which I like to see because sometimes you see system requirements lists where like the Nvidia and the AMD GPU that they recommend are just like not at all on the same tier. And you're just like, does that mean the engine favors one architecture or these people just didn't have relatively similar GPUs to test or whatever? Anyway, so if you fall short of these requirements, it certainly looks like you could still play the game at the lowest settings and maybe just not be getting that solid 60 FPS, right? The 1050 Ti seem to be getting us, you know, 40s and 50s at some mixture of settings, not all the way down to as low as they go. So like if you have a 1050, you're falling down to 80% of that, but also keep in mind, you're also maybe dropping down to lower amounts of VRAM. So you'll really wanna turn the textures all the way down, that kind of stuff. So, you know, your 660 Ti is definitely falling short of this recommendation. Uh, you know, your 660 is getting pretty far down there. So again, you can find your list in the chart here if I didn't show it to you. Now, if we scroll up, you might have better performance, right? Like a, uh, you know, GTX 590, you might have a GTX 6, uh, 1650, that's 25% better performance. Well, that would probably get you from the same settings we just saw on the 1050 Ti that weren't getting 60 FPS. You could probably use those same settings and now be getting just about 60 FPS. Um, 
the 970 is a 47% lead over the 1050 Ti. So if you're still sitting on a 970, I think you're gonna be pulling uh, 60 FPS on you know some mixture of medium-ish settings um, pretty much just fine, right? And we can scroll up your, your GTX 1060, which by the way, I bought one of these to test out, so I might actually um, release some testing of this game uh, on the 1060 if I have time when the game actually launches. Anyway, and you can kind of scroll up from there, like a 1650 Super, you know, you're 69% better than the, uh, than the minimum uh, 1050 Ti. Okay, so how about the CPU side of things? We've got the ancient Core i5-2500K or the much newer Ryzen 5 1600X. Now, the only gameplay footage I could find on a 2500K, they didn't actually have a frame rate counter. So I got basically nothing out of that. Okay, but I did find the Ryzen 5 1600X in some gameplay, but let's also just tell you what these CPUs are. So the Intel Core i5-2500K is a four core, four thread processor, Sandy Bridge, though, this is from way back in 2011. So this is just a four core, four thread chip from 2011. Now the 2500K was like legendary in my opinion, like for a long time, this thing held up there as a very solid uh, gaming CPU. But I feel like that kind of uh, diminished years ago. <laughs> um, so I don't know what to tell you. They're listing this one. I couldn't find any specific performance on it. They're also listing the AMD Ryzen 5 1600X, which I would consider to be a much better CPU, but they're listing them at the same performance tier. So uh, I don't know what to make of that, but this one is six core, 12 threads, and it's from 2017. And I actually did find some gameplay. Where was it? Uh, here's some gameplay on the 1600X. Now this is somebody on a GTX 1070, which is also interesting um, because that's a recommended GPU. We'll get to that in a, in a second. But uh, it might be hard for you guys to see the, the uh, frame rate counter here, but we're in the 60s, 70s, all of that. And, and that appears to actually be mostly a GPU limit. So what I'm getting at here is the minimum CPU, at least on the AMD side of things, definitely seems to be able to go over 60 frames per second. How much over? Question mark. But over 60 FPS doesn't seem to be an issue. And again, the final release of the game might have better optimization. Now their VRAM they're listing is just two gigabytes. I think that's imagine if you turn everything all the way down to low and stick to 1080p, you can probably uh, get by with two gigabytes, but turning things up, especially textures, you'll want more than that. And then, hey, storage. Now RAM, as usual, usually jumps from eight gigabytes uh, minimums to 16 recommended these days. Now, I also wanna mention before I move on, that this game, it hasn't officially announced that it has FSR, but I actually made videos um, during the beta. You could actually open up the configure file, this is one of my videos, and you could actually uh, turn on FSR. Now what's FSR? That's where you run the game at a lower resolution, but it uses the FSR upscaling technique to make it look very close to native, it's not perfect, but give you a huge performance boost. And I also have a video of my RX 6800 system, the 6800 XT system running the game at that, and I could easily do 4K at the FSR ultra quality at well over 100 frames per second. Uh, using that, and it was a big boost in performance. So I do want to mention that it that the final release of the game, I would assume, would have FSR actually just accessible in the menus, and for the beta, they just didn't have that turned on, which is great news to see. Let's jump over to the recommended. Now our CPUs are jumping up to the i7-4770K or the Ryzen 1800X. Now, given that the 1600X was already giving us well over 60 FPS from what I could see, um, the 1800X is just gonna do even better. Like I said, I couldn't really find any, uh, any gameplay footage with actual frame rate counters on these Intel CPUs. Now the 47, uh, 4770K is at least a newer chip. This is Haswell coming out in 2013. And this was four core, eight thread. So this one at least actually had hyper threading. Personally, this one sounds more reasonable to me. Uh, that that 2500K, I don't know, that just sounds questionable to me. But like I said, I didn't have one to test and I couldn't find any footage in the amount of time I had to look. Um, maybe one of you guys in the comment section have a 2500K still and tried out the beta and you could let me know. Who knows? <laughs> um, now the 1800X, again, is still a 2017 chip, but this is just one of the higher end ones. This is an eight core, 16 thread chip. 
and I think this one will be doing great. And a lot of, uh, you know, the newer Ryzen's are going to have better gaming performance because of better single thread performance. And again, newer Intel chips, I think will do just fine. My uh, i5-9600K I tested it out on was able to pull well over 100 FPS, uh, no issues, and that's not even one of the newer Intel chips these days. So it doesn't seem too crazy on the CPU side of things. Again, we're jumping up to 16 gigabytes of RAM and our recommended GPU comes up to the GTX 1070 or the GTX 1660 or the AMD Radeon RX Vega 56. Our VRAM uh, suggestion is jumping up to six gigabytes. That'll be because uh, you're gonna be, these I think are targeting the maximum settings. So your textures are up. That's gonna use a lot more VRAM, other, other effects in the game are gonna use more VRAM. So you don't really need six gigabytes if you're willing to turn some of those settings down. I think recommended is targeting the ultra settings over 60 FPS. And some of the uh, you know reason for that is, hey, look, Call of Duty Vanguard beta, GTX 1070, ultra graphics. Um, and so as far as I can tell, this guy turned all the settings all the way up. He kind of shows that here uh, in, in the video, but you can take a look at that. And then um, actually playing, our frame rate counter here was, you know, 88, 80, you know, jump around to make sure we get a variety of scenes, 77, jumping around some more, 77, 79. So it appears to be in the upper 70s to low 80s using a GTX 1070. Now, where does that fall relative to like our 1050 Ti minimum? Well, if we keep scrolling up, the 1070 is, um, 215% of the performance on average of a GTX 1050 Ti. So over double the minimum uh, GPU to get up to this 1070. Um, so there you go. Now there were other recommended GPUs in that tier. We've got the 1660 or the uh, RX Vega 56. So we can look at where those perform. The Vega 56 you can see is extremely close to the 1070 on average. And the 1660 actually falls a bit shorter. That's usually about 87% of the performance, but it's still pretty close. We saw that the GTX 1070 had headroom above 60 FPS. It was closer to the um, you know 80 FPS, at least in that video on the beta. So this will do fine. And again, remember that was at 1080p. So if you wanted to get uh, you know ultra settings at 1440p, you're going to want a stronger GPU that's going to use more pixels. So you can look at where your GPU falls in relation to this. Again, the 1060 uh, falling at like 74% of that performance. Uh, whereas if you have, for example, a you know a 2060 Super, that's 32% higher performance. There you go. Now the beta. Uh, didn't seem to have any kind of RTX features that at least I noticed, no DLSS. Uh, the FSR, well, again, that's not an RTX feature, but that was hidden in the config file. I would hope that's published um, you know, in the actual settings menus for the final game, and I imagine it would be. Overall, I don't think this game's gonna be too hard to play. Um, now, whether that's because it's super well optimized or because, you know, the, the COD games just seem to just slightly update the same old engine from ages ago, um, you know, <laughs> let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I hope all of you have an excellent day.